I don't think it's a, a exaggeration to say that 21 years ago ish. Well, I guess a little more because of filming and all that. Uh, your life and career were changed. You had been an actor, but um, you know, did you think you were going to get to be the lead, despite being third build? But that's a whole other thing. <laughs> You know, um, I had I had grown up with this kind of vision in my head that I was going to be an actor and that, you know, it would work out and that sort of thing. So it was obviously very exciting for me, but there was also this element of like, well, yeah, this is what should be happening. If my dream is meant to come through, then this is like the way that it happens, you know? So, I mean, I'm very fortunate to be the right age and the right tone for what Cameron was looking for, you know, in, in my life. Um, but obviously from there, like, you know, I've been, I've been, a, I've been an actor professionally since then. So, um, you know, a pretty, pretty amazing shift of gears, you know, for me in my life. Yeah. Um, tell me, I actually haven't seen the, um, the extended cut, the director's cut, the, untitled cut um, so i'm really looking forward to getting the um the 4k blu-ray um to do to, to finally see it i've seen the original the theatrical version uh, a bunch of times including yesterday just to brush awesome. up um do you have a a favored cut oh yeah absolutely the the extended cut the untitled bootleg cut it's like the only one that i want to watch you know if i uh, now and then a friend will want to watch it with me, um, you know, because uh, it's it's so so many years later than when we filmed it. And that's like, you know, without fail, the one that I want to watch. You know, when I saw the theatrical version uh, for the first time, I saw it in a uh, in a an um, additional dialogue recording booth. So it was like a mm -hmm. sound booth. And Cameron was like, do you want to watch the movie? And I was like, Yes. And we watched it. And I remember thinking like, as the credits rolled, I was like, that was amazing. But that was it. That felt like it was five minutes long. Like yeah. it felt, you know, so condensed compared to the experience that I had, which was seven months or something like that of my life between the casting time, the pre-production and actual filming. Um, you know, there was so much more that happened that wasn't in the theatrical release. And then when I watched the bootleg cut, I was like, there's that's where all that stuff went, you know? It's, um, you know, I, I think that that movie is so rewatchable on so many different levels, but I feel like for me personally, just as someone who writes about this stuff, you know, it's kind of, uh, recursive. Now I'm doing, I'm doing your thing. I mean, I haven't been in high school in like 12 years or something, but <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, being uh, 17 or 18 when you were making that movie. And, yeah. um, you know, were you the kid? Did you get to hang or were you kind of shuttled away uh, when the party started? Um, I was 16 and, uh, you know, I was pretty... Uh, I was not like into party stuff. I wasn't really looking for it. Um, but even if I had been, Cameron was like, we got to keep this kid's naivete intact. We have to keep how green he is intact. It's for the character. Yeah. 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 Like he's not, nobody is going to, you know, be offering him drinks or to smoke pot or it. he's like, he's like, we just let all of the first time things happen while we're filming like on camera. And, uh, you know, there were other castmates that had a kind of like a side mission, which was to corrupt me and to uh, to get me out into those uh, environments. But, uh, you know, between my mom who was there and like the Hawk crew that was the set teacher, uh, Rona Gordon and the um, the uh, set acting coach, Belita Moreno and uh, Cameron, it, it just was not going to happen. Um, so I did, you know. I, I would go to set and I would work and then I would go do uh, school in the trailer uh, while everybody else was like playing, you know, Almond brothers on acoustic guitars. Like we had some amazing musicians in there and they're playing their own music or they're playing rock and roll together. 
all in costume in like the dressing room of an actual concert venue. And uh, I'd be like, cool, I'm going to go learn some geography. I'll be back in 40 minutes whenever we're ready again. So that was kind of lame for me as a 16 year old, but, uh, but in hindsight, probably a good thing. It kept me feeling like the outsider that William, you know, really was. So did you get to make up for that on, uh, on like, uh, we, we bought a zoo. Did you get to be like, now I'm a grown up. let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there were really weren't many party people on that one. I remember that's when, uh, Scarlett was dating Sean Penn. And so Sean Penn would come hang around and Sean Penn has an intense, uh, personality. And I was playing a lot of flamenco guitar at the time. And uh, so he, he stopped me one day. He's like, hey, do you have your flamenco guitar? He's like hanging out by Scarlett's trailer. And I'm like, yeah, I have my guitar. And he's like, come on, bring it over here. So he had me bring my flamenco guitar over. And he's like, babe, babe, you got to listen to this. You got to listen to this kid play. He's like, all right, Patrick, take us to Spain. And I'm like, okay. So I'm playing flamenco guitar with Sean, you know, for Sean Penn and Scarlett Johansson while they're, we're chilling like, out on the ranch, you know, that we filmed in uh, Thousand Oaks or whatever. So that was a, that was a pretty wild time, but it, w- it wasn't really a party atmosphere on that one. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got work to do. You're, you're there to work. You're not here to party. And it's, uh, uh, so when you're uh, back to uh, almost famous, you know, like famously, you know, the character is very much a, an avatar for Cameron himself in some ways. Did you have to go to, um, to Cameron school or did you get the freedom to make it your own and have the script just be Cameron's personality just through that? Yeah. He sent me some of his articles, you know, that were an insight into how he viewed the world that he was in and how much passion he had for it, how much care he invested in it. But those were really on the indicators, you know, he didn't, he didn't ever want me to mimic him or, or anything like that. And for sure, I put some mannerisms in there that were fun to include, you know, that uh, Cameron recognized and was like, yeah, okay, I do that. Whatever. You can put that in there. But, uh, but for the most part, it was what everything he wanted to communicate was really in the script and on, on the page. And so it was about me bringing my, you know, performance into that, into that structure, you know, and breathing life into that. Uh, he was never, ever really concerned about how accurate to him it was or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the movie, just having seen it again yesterday, it, it stands the test of time. It's 21. It can go drink if it wants to. Um, (laughs) and, and this 4k Blu-ray, you know, I, I can't wait to get my hands on it uh you yeah i I don't think that role that role could be played by anybody else (laughs) that's not something that i say about a lot of characters a lot of roles but i think that it's perfect (laughs) thanks man yeah i mean it was uh it was a synergy of a lot of different things in time and space that you know gave me the privilege to play that part so sure well thanks so much And, um, you know, I hope to catch you uh, for something else down the line, too. Yeah. And uh, uh, Last of Us 2, the 10 out of 10 performance. Right (laughs) Right there. There it is. I didn't even see it back there. Yeah. uh, Ashley Johnson and her boyfriend, uh, Brian Foster, gave me that. that I think it's amazing. Um, Yeah. Last of Us 2. How, How fucking good is that game? That was, I got to tell Troy Baker that that was the first game I played after my father passed away. No way. And it he was just like, oh my God, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, uh, you know, I haven't gone back to it since then because I just feel like it's too close. I, I want to, but I feel like, I don't know, that there's a wall that's up and I don't know if I can bring that down again. Bro, like playing those games, like this, I had a similar experience with Last of Us 1. My best friend had passed away probably three months before I played the game. So I was like in a heavy space. And then, you know, the prologue of The Last of Us Part 1 is intense as fuck. And I was like, isn't this supposed to be some fucking zombie game? Like, 
<laughs> I'm like weeping at the opening, you know, of this fucking game. I was like, if this doesn't get like lighter, I don't know that I can play it, but I did play it. Um, and I loved it. But last of us two, I played through and I haven't replayed it yet for kind of the same reason. Like it is such a space to go into and it's so immersive and so good and so masterfully executed by everybody that it is an amazing experience, but it's so intense that it's not like breath of the wild, which I can throw on anytime or Skyrim or something like that, that I can just throw on and, and just play over and over again. Like last of us is like, you gotta take a deep breath and like jump in again, you know? Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for your time. Uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.